Adam Filter and the world of sport. Just as a champion sportsman finds new ways to be better than ever, so the makers of Craven Filter are constantly finding new ways of making a better cigarette. People who get most enjoyment from life get most enjoyment from Craven Filter, the clean cigarette that's better than ever. Smoking. It's been a part of human culture for thousands of years. It was first used in shamanistic rituals around 5000 BC. And by the 17th century, every major culture had been introduced to tobacco. It wasn't until the late 20th century that we finally came to the conclusion that the stuff was killing us. Then BOOM! A Chinese pharmacist named Han Lick creates the electronic cigarette. Lick quit smoking after his father died of cigarette smoke induced lung cancer. After seeing how difficult kicking the habit could be, he sought to create an alternative that would allow people to substitute something else for tobacco smoke. Enter the electronic cigarette. The first e-cig was manufactured in China in 2003. And after gaining popularity there, moved to England, and then on to the United States. Over the past decade, e-cig use has exploded in the US. With people turning to them as an alternative to smoking, or as a way to kick the habit entirely. 
Since its invention in 2003, electronic cigarettes have grown into a $1 billion industry. The unique nature of e-cigs has stirred up a growing underground movement of users who call themselves vapors. Jonathan Hopkins is a mixologist for a small chain of vapor shops called Vapid. Job title, mixologist. It's something I've actually spent time thinking about. What, what is a mixologist? What, what, what is this job? And it's, it's um, more of a flavor artisan. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 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 kind of like a, a chef, if, if you will, but just with uh, vapor flavors. Really, uh, less of my job now is, is actually getting to do that. It's like uh, 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 the, the last thing I get to do anymore is actually make flavors, and that's the, the, the most fun thing. Okay, here's a quick breakdown of how an e-cig works. There are two main components, an atomizer and a battery. The battery powers a small coil surrounding the wick, the wick draws in juice, the coil gets hot, and the atomized liquid is inhaled by the vapor. The basic mixture that goes in e-liquid is propylene glycol, uh, this is uh, an ingredient that has been used commercially for over 50 years. It's in pharmaceuticals, it's in cosmetics, it's in food. There's a lot of applications for it, even apparently in air ducts and hospitals. That's one of the ingredients. The other is vegetable glycerin. Similar uh, vegetable glycerin is in, in PG, uh, the lower percentage. Um, what we use is a, a palm kernel glycerin, so it's a, a non-GMO. 100% vegetable source. It's not a biodiesel byproduct. It's a very pharmaceutical grade, pure 99.7 is the pharmacopoeia that it has to meet, but ours is actually 99.9. .9. The other main ingredient is uh, nicotine. So the nicotine we use is from tobacco. It's in a base of either PG or VG. And then the last thing is uh, flavorings. Typically, they were initially candy flavorings. And as this arose, specific companies came about to produce uh, flavors for e-juice. So they'll either be in alcohol or PG or VG uh, as a base, and uh, we blend those together to ultimately uh, create the final product. Mostly these days, it's high VG. So oftentimes, there's little or no PG. I've personally met one person who was actually allergic to PG. It, it does it does exist, but for the most part, we're using a, a max VG. Primarily, I, I like ones that are made in America and from better brands, because the market is is still not regulated by the FDA. There's pending a legislation being worked on right now by the FDA. There's not many similarities when it comes down to it. E-cigarette e has five basic ingredients. The main similarity between the two are nicotine. And nicotine, when it really comes down to it, is much more similar to caffeine than to the evil beast that we typically think of as a cigarette. Oh, cigarettes have nicotine, they're, they're horrible. Uh, and they are, but <laughs> the, it's, it's not so much just the nicotine that's really the issue. When you look at nicotine in its, in its own form, it's, it's much more, or at least I feel like I put it on the level of, uh, more on the level of caffeine. Yeah, that's right. A study published in the Handbook of Experimental Pharmacology found that nicotine alone had not been found to be addictive. Nicotine by itself has never been shown to be addictive in individuals who have not smoked cigarettes prior to using nicotine. On top of that, nicotine's effects have more in common with caffeine than anything else. We know you smoke tobacco for a while, you're likely to die from it. 
We don't know that about nicotine. In fact, what we do know about nicotine, it's a lot safer than uh, tobacco. Got many fewer of the TSNAs, tobacco-specific nitrosamines, that cause cancer. We know that. It's really the 4,000 other chemicals when you're igniting and burning uh, the tobacco, and, and it's not even just the tobacco, it's the other chemicals that they're actually applying onto it. That's really the concern. So similar in, yes, they do have nicotine, dissimilar in you're dealing with five, 10 different things over here, and we know of 4,000 for sure that are being uh, exploded over here. As a industry, I feel our response has not just been driven by profits, as I've seen in other things. When uh, information came out about flavoring ingredient, that's a butter note, and it has a dicetyl element, this, this uh, a chemical that has been linked in popcorn factories to a, a lung disease. So when we found out that this same dicetyl is in butter notes, which surprisingly sometimes is in a strawberry, you wouldn't know that there's a, you know, dicetyl, you're not thinking it's a custard or it's a cream flavor, so it's fine, but there actually is in other things. Now that came about last year, and, and since then I've seen a great willingness by manufacturers and producers and flavor producers to at least allow a knowledge of, for the consumer to choose whether they want to or not. Interestingly enough, the dicetyl notes are added to cigarettes. So they're not already in it, but it's one of the chemicals that are actually added to cigarettes. So uh, it's not something that a smoker is not used to already having. It's just we're going, hey, if we're doing this, we want to remove everything uh, else out of it. The difference between e-juice that has other ingredients is only those base ingredients. Uh, the rest of the e-juice is made the same way. There's a handful of other things uh, that can be added in that fashion. Is added just like nicotine. So it's going to come in a, in a base and go in just like a flavoring. We did a lot of testing on caffeine before we released it and it's surprisingly effective. It's safe enough where you would have to vape more than you could in a day physically. If you just sat there all day and just inhaled it, you'd have to vape the whole, but more than that uh, to get to a uh, unsafe level. Yet one vaping session in, in 30 seconds, you start to feel the actual delivery of the caffeine. So it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting experience, but essentially it's the same thing. Uh, melatonin or other substances in e-juice uh, get delivered just like the nicotine does and um, the reaction is quite nice, quite effective. Seeing as how e-liquids and e cigs contain significantly less carcinogens than analog cigarettes, many people have made the switch. Wes Dopp and Jared Long meet new vapors every day, people looking to make the switch from cigarettes to e cigs Three years ago when I was living in California, um, I was out there with the Marines, we were on a field op and one of the dogs had, you know, just like the really basic kind of one, he had Red Bull and Mountain Dew that we, we mixed and that was my first experience with it. Fast forward to this past year, um, I was looking for a new job and then I, I happened upon this place back and they got me set up with one. I was kind of like, eh, I don't think it's gonna work. I tried quitting before. But I'll do it to make you happy. It's a job. Um, but you know, came in, put my cigarette out just before walking in. Walked out with the vape, and that was it. In the beginning, I came across a starter kit. Um, at the time, me and my girlfriend were smoking, and we wanted to quit. Well, I didn't have much luck with it, being that it was a, a tank and a pen style. Uh, just kept leaking on me. And so then I ventured into the upgraded vaporizers three, four years ago. I really started to get into it. I skipped the whole starter kit thing. Uh, ever since then, I was done completely. I didn't even need them. Just the smell of a cigarette bothers me now. And I wonder, like, you know, I used to smell like that. You know, you put cologne on when you go out. But you're just putting that stuff over top of that cigarette smell. And someone who smokes isn't gonna notice it. But someone who doesn't smoke notices it. And it's really, it's really bothered me now. It's really a freeing feeling 
because the biggest lie that you tell yourself is like, I can stop smoking at any time, you know? You say you're gonna stop and then you go and buy another pack and every 30 minutes or so you're like, I, I need another cigarette, I need another cigarette. Oh, you're going out for a cigarette? Let me join you. Since vaping, like I, I remember very distinctly, like about a week and a half in, um, I left my vape at the store and I had a day off the next day. And I remember when I got home, feeling a little freaked out about it. Like, ah, I don't have cigarettes, I don't have my vape, what am I gonna do? But I woke up the next morning, and it was like, whatever. You know, I went through that whole day, nothing. Went into the work the next day, got my vape, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So that's a, that was a really freeing, kind of empowering moment. <laughs> Despite the positive aspects, there is a substantial amount of opposition to e-cigs. There was a scare recently, or a scare, there was a, a news uh, article that was uh, put out by a university and it expanded that e-cigarettes uh, produce formaldehyde. That's true if you burn them incorrectly, if you use them incorrectly. The study he's referring to is one done by Portland State University. It found that burning e-liquids produces notable amounts of formaldehyde. The study was later invalidated. Samples were burned at excess of 600 degrees, well above the average temperature a vapor could comfortably inhale. Professor Peter Hajek, director of the Tobacco Dependence Research Unit at Barts and the University of London, commented on the study saying, when a chicken is burned, the resulting black crisp will contain carcinogens, but that does not mean the chickens are carcinogenic. Without overheating the e-liquid, no formaldehyde was detected. Vaping may not be as safe as breathing clean mountain air, but it is much safer than smoking. It would be a shame if the study persuaded smokers who cannot or do not want to stop smoking and contemplate vaping that they might as well stick to their deadly cigarettes. Not only is faulty science opposing e cigs one of today's most popular methods of quitting can kill you. It helped me uh, be able to actually stay off of uh, cigarettes where with the patch um, I lasted about a month uh, didn't do Chantex I had a friend who uh, his family member committed suicide on Chantex did did he just say suicide Chantex a drug intended to help users quit a destructive habit has been linked to inciting suicidal thoughts in its users in 2009 400 Chantex users reported self-destructive thoughts and in 34 cases, the users died. If Chantix producer Pfizer wants to help smokers quit, then in those 34 cases, they've certainly succeeded. Despite the opposition, many have found a home in vaping. Numerous online forums host thousands of users who come together to discuss any topic pertaining to vaping. YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, social media, and word of mouth have been the two largest contributing factors in the rise in popularity of vaping. It's grown rapidly. I, I, I would say I haven't seen any subculture group like this spring up from nowhere and become, uh, become so big. I would say when I started, it was definitely a lot more, what is that? But it's much more commonplace now as far as in general people you know understand vaping community wise uh it's actually really tight i can go to any shop from from virginia to delaware to maryland to wherever um you don't have to worry about you know i go in there and say hey you know i'm jared i work at e-factor and they say welcome you know it's, it's just open arms the big time vapor uh, vape guys that are into the real fancy stuff, they're, they don't judge you if you were to walk in with it. You know, a vapor is a vapor. More of my friends now are vapors than not, and uh, the social aspect of it is pretty big. Here in, in the area, there's a league of clouds, and so different uh, vape shops actually have their own teams, and they get together at meets and have competitions. Especially for the hobby side, you know, you're putting all that work into it, you want to show it off. Um, and that's really the best way to do it, is uh, who can blow the biggest, densest cloud. It's just fun. 
and that's you know something we like to do and that brings you know more people into it hopefully you know kicking the, the cigarette habit it's growing rapidly and i only see it more for that matter there's already vaping celebrities and i say that because they have uh, enough youtube subscribers to put them on that category you know there's vaping conventions now that are huge thousands and thousands of people it's amazing to see all of this interest and and uh, and there's celebrities walking around and everyone knows these you know uh, a handful of people and and it's because they're, they're entertaining uh, um, uh, in, in, enjoyable I like cars, I like cars. <laughs> and uh, I mean any any car meet that I've been to you know everyone's out there vaping at the same time it's like it kind of goes hand in hand with cars you know you can customize them and tinker with them as much as you want and same thing with the uh, mechanical mods and the uh, RDAs you can tinker it with it as well so it kind of kind of goes hand in hand mm -hmm. I think that within the next five years there will be some stipulations on you know what you can't do and what you can't do you know I'm all for the, the regulations of you because I don't want to vape something that's going to poison me, you know. So as far as, you know, like regulations and stuff, it, it needs to happen, just not so harshly as they think. This guy who came in, he was 72 years old, been smoking for 50 years, and he's just like, I just feel like it's time to quit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, but he, he really proved to me that, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, or how long you've been smoking, you know, you can switch over to this. It's not even complicated. It's a button and a tank. <laughs> um, and he, he just he just took off with it, too. Like, he came back in a couple weeks later, and he was like, you know, after 50 years, two weeks without a cigarette, that's an accomplishment. And I, I can't agree more. Look, it's true. Vaping hasn't been around long enough to know all the effects it has on the human body. And there are valid concerns from the medical community. But, on the other hand, there's the proven deadly potential of tobacco smoking. Vaping is still young and growing. Only time will tell if it's truly healthier than cigarettes. Government regulation is an important part, and most leaders in the community agree that standards should be put in place for the safety of all e-cigarette users and those around them. Vapors are a warm culture, eager to educate others about their passion. And I'm very happy to see the movement of vapors in the U.S. encouraging people to move to a medium that is going to be much better off for them. Eventually they may wish to stop vaping and that would be even better, but at least if they've moved away from tobacco, they've made a huge step towards longevity and health in their lives. You know, if you're still curious, talk to people, go and ask people, go into a shop. Everybody's, what I've really found is the community is friendly and, and people are excited about it and are, are for the most part really happy to, uh, to talk to you about it. Um, uh, just hope from this one one person brings it to their family and says, "All right, mom, I watch this thing in class, and mm. yeah, you gotta try this." Besides that, they bomb. <laughs>